Hello viewers, this is the second part of lecture number 11 in which we are going to design MATLAB code for the fractional trapezoidal method which is a method used to approximate Riemann level fractional integral. In first part of lecture number 11, I had derived this method which is now I am highlighting. So this is the method called fractional trapezoidal method. So note down here that the method has three pieces. For k is equal to zero, I mean for the first value of k, you have this red color part. Likewise, when k is equal to one or greater than one and or less than or equal to n minus one. So when k lies between one and n minus 1 including these two endpoints then we have this green color part. Finally when k is equal to n then the third piece is 1 and all of these three pieces have a common coefficient h power alpha divided by gamma of alpha plus 2 where alpha is known as the fractional order. This is the gamma function in the denominator and then h is the step size. J alpha stands for the notation used to show the Riemann level fractional integral. So you can see that the first equation written on the slide is what we call the fractional trapezoidal method. So now before you watch this lecture, I would request you that you must watch the first part of lecture number 11 wherein I had provided the step-by-step -step derivation for this method called fractional trapezoidal method. So today I will explain how a MATLAB code can be designed for this method. So let's go to the M file to look at the MATLAB code. So now here Starting from line number 10, these are the necessary commands. Similarly, uh, and on line number 10, the commands are actually used. If there are already uh, some outputs on the command window or any other window opened of the MATLAB, then it will make everything clear. Format compact will reduce the spaces among the lines of the output that we will have at the at the compilation or at the simulations of this uh, method. On line number 18 that you see h is equal to 0 0.1 this is the step size. Line number 21 this is the lower limit of integration the first value. Likewise, x last is equal to 1 and this is what I have taken as the upper limit of integration. Line number 28, this is the integration interval wherein the h is the step size. So, if x is starting from 0 and it ends at 1 with the step size 0 0.1, so we will have total 11 values because 0 is included. Then line number 31 is what we have the number of steps which is final value minus initial value divided by the step size. And if it is any for example fractional number then the ceiling function will make it an integer, a positive integer. You can also look at the uh, help menu to understand what is the ceiling function. Line number 35 is arbitrarily chosen number by me 0 0.95 which is a fractional order alpha. Line number 39 is the function that I have chosen for the integration is sine x. So this is the function that has to be integrated. Now the algorithm starts. You can see here that I have taken an index k that starts from 2 to n minus 1. Let me show you once again over here on the slide 
that k is equal to 0 corresponds to the first value which is this highlighted red highlighted expression with the red color when k is from 1 and ends at n minus 1 it means in matlab k is starting from 2 okay so that is why i have written here k is starting from 2 and then you can see that i have assigned the name first for the expression that was highlighted with the red color on the slide so you can also once again look at this and you can tally the expressions with the code so look at this now with the red color expression the line number 49 is being meshed n minus 1 whole power alpha plus 1 same we have over here n minus 1 whole power alpha plus 1 then minus n minus 1 minus alpha you can see the same terms over here and then multiplied by n power alpha and you can see i have multiplied this expression by n power alpha so this is for the first value so that is why i have assigned a name first after that the middle value as you can see over here so this is the middle value where k is also involved so here once again tally the terms on the slide green color n minus k plus 1 power alpha plus 1 same goes here focus on line number 53 the right hand side n minus k plus 1 whole power alpha plus 1 again on the slide plus n minus 1 minus k whole power alpha plus 1 so we have same on line number 53 n minus 1 minus k whole power alpha plus 1 once again the last term green color minus 2 multiplied by n minus k power alpha plus 1 and line number 53 the last term on the right hand side is same as written on the slide with the green color fine so this is the middle term defined by me on line number 53 go to the next part now coefficient this is the constant term which is being appeared with every expression so i have assigned the name coefficient over here few letters few alphabets of the word coefficient h power alpha divided by gamma of alpha plus 2 now the main code is on line number 61 try to understand this line number 61 coefficient this number okay h power alpha divided by gamma of alpha plus 2 comes here then look at this this is the first expression red color highlighted with the red color and i had assigned the name first look at line number 49 so we have first over here and it is being multiplied with the first functional value because you have to substitute over here so this constant the first piece from this constant will go over here and then you have the multiplication with the first functional value plus sign summation then all the middle values that i have defined on line number 53 are being multiplied with once again with the function where now k is starting from 2 to n minus 1 as i had shown you on line number 45 i hope you are going to understand it clearly plus now you can see that the third expression is 1 so it is not necessary to write down 1 here and it is just being multiplied with the final value of the function so i have only written here f of x last which was 1 x last was 1 in our code so that's it this is the main formula that you see on the slide as well as on the code so line number 49 53 57 and 61 are the lines that make this formula what we call fractional trapezoidal method so actually i have separated the first term and the last term and then i have combined all the middle terms if you recall the classical trapezoidal method then similar sort of things happen over there so that is why i would suggest you that you should also at least once you should go through the MATLAB code for the classical numerical method 
which is about the trapezoidal rule. So you would easily understand that what I'm going to do here. So the first value, last value, these two values appear once while all the middle terms are being summed up. So the similar sort of structure, the fractional trapezoidal method follows. Okay, so now we have computed the integral now. Now I need to compare it with the exact solution. So the function that I had taken was a sine function. So its exact solution is mentioned on line number 71. Once again, let me tell you that this exact solution for the function sine, I have explained in many of my previous lectures. For example, on lecture number, first part of lecture number 10, the third part of lecture number 10, and in some other lectures as well. So I would provide the link of those lectures in the description box. So what you see now on line number 71 is the exact integral for the function sine between 0 and 1. After that, on line number 74, I have computed the absolute error, the difference between exact and the approximate result that we are getting from this trapezoidal method. And then I have displayed the results like in the first column I will have steps. In the second column we will see the value for the step size we are using. In the third column we will see the exact answer. In the fourth column we will see the approximate answer. And finally we will look at the absolute errors. So let's run this code. Let's run the code and see what going, what is going on on the command window. So now I have pressed the run button and I'm going to the command window to see the results. So you can see that total 10 steps are taken with the step size 0 0.1, exact answer, approximate answer and the error. You can see that the integer part of both exact and approximate answer matches with each other while the error is absolute error is 7.9518 10 to the power minus 2. I'm going back to the code and I comment the line number 10 and decrease the step size from 0 0.1 to 0 0.01. I also highlight, uh, I also hide the line number 70. 6. Okay, because now we have already seen that the what are the values being displayed on first, second, third, fourth, and fifth column. Okay, so I have uh, I have just used the percentage sign on line number 10 to hide these commands and I have decreased the step size. So I'm going to run the script again. And now I decrease this step size further. I'm going to run the script again. This decrease the step size. Run the script again. Decrease the step size and once again run the script again. And now I'm going back to the command window to see the results. You can see. Let's run the script once more. So now I can see all the results on the command window. So you can see now uh, when step size was 0 0.1, the error was of magnitude 10 to the power minus 2 and the error decreases by one order of magnitude. If you recall in our classical numerical analysis, the method, trapezoidal method is a first order accurate method because it is obtained by a first order polynomial that we had used from the Lagrange's interpolation technique. So the similar kind of things are happening over here. So you can see that exact answer, approximate answer and the errors. So that's it. This was all about the MATLAB coding of the fractional trapezoidal method which is used to approximate the Riemann-Liouville fractional integral. I would request you 
to please ask the questions in the comment box. Your feedback means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.